Well, thanks be to God indeed for his words this morning. Words of uh, encouragement, words that bring us hope and restore us. Um, But words that kind of challenge us at the same time, don't they? I mean, especially whenever Jesus is casting out demons and and things like that, it's very intriguing to me. I mean, I kind of like that horror show genre, you know, and whenever I read something like that, I don't know about you, but my mind automatically goes back into some of those classic horror movies. You know, the ones like, well, uh, The Exorcist, who can forget that? You know, Linda Blair's claim to fame, right? Her head spinning around and it's just crazy. The Amityville Horror, man, I was scared to death. And the other night, you know, now that football's on, it's kind of between sports seasons and all the, you know, TV shows seem to be through the seasons and they're showing the rerun. So there's really nothing to really watch. But we're cruising through and the channel surfing deal and we come upon this show. It's called The Prodigal Son. Now, this is not an endorsement nor a suggestion that you watch this. That's just me as crazy as I am. But this particular episode dealt with exorcism there was this murder that happened in a church and uh this demon i I found out a new thing i didn't know this demon's name in revelation 7 this demon is named by uh given a name Uh, um let's see adana 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 yeah something like that anyway look it up any so It's all about this intriguing thing about an exorcism and a possession and there's all kinds of things going on and uh, there's investigations and religious symbolism and this and that and priests and um, rites and it's just crazy. But you know how it turned out? The guy that was the murderer had lead poisoning. How anticlimactic is that? Well, anyway, it's always intriguing. And sometimes we think of that stuff literally like a a demon possession and exorcism. But for our purposes this morning, I I want us to put that kind of off to the side. And those images about how Jesus casts out the demons. And that's not to disregard that there's actual people that can become possessed. But I think the bigger problem for a majority of Christians, the majority of people is they're demon oppressed. In other words, those things uh, that are allowed in their lives, that they internalize, that they live out every, every day throughout their lives, oppress them, and they become hurts that actually drive our thoughts and our behaviors. They're hurts that need healing, and they need Jesus to come and to cast them out once and for all. So that we're no longer just victims of our circumstances, but that we're victors through Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus wants for us. That's God's plan for us. That you don't have to be a victim. That you're more than a conqueror. That there is nothing in this world. Nothing that can rob you or separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Nothing. But let's face it, most of us have those little things. And I mentioned in our introduction and our welcome this morning about, you know, just think about the pandemic. And you look at the statistics and they're so disturbing. Addictions are up, drugs and alcohol use, and other kinds of addictions as well, food and and gambling and all of that, those things that we try to to use in our lives to cope with the difficulties or maybe we just want to find release and comfort so we turn to those things that are temporary and really destructive in life instead of turning to the source of life Jesus Christ there's been a a 700 percent increase in depression because we're so isolated we're so separated we're so divided we're so broken that we can't interact with each other in the same ways anymore. We were built for community, folks. We were built for one another and for God. And when you take part of that equation away, it's, it's no wonder that 
we seem lonely and depressed and frustrated. You think about the things that the pandemic has brought along with our school system. More and more kids are opting out of life. Suicide is on the rise in young children. Despair is taking over. Now, you might not be dealing with any of those big major issues like addictions or depression, anxiety, or suicidal thoughts, but somewhere, I bet if you search your heart and ask God to search your heart, there's some kind of issue that eats at you that robs you of that true abundant life that Jesus promises us. Over and over again, I come along people who make the same decisions over and over and over and over again. It's a pattern. Sometimes they're conscious of it, sometimes they're not. But have you ever had a friend or maybe a family member even that maybe they're single, they're looking for that, you know, one in a million soulmate or whatever. And it seems like every relationship they get into is the exact same relationship. The people that they're picking out, that they're seeking out are flawed people that end up hurting more than loving the person, your friend, your relative that's involved. Maybe that's you. Maybe you find yourself constantly in this cycle, in this pattern of picking out people in your life, whether they're friends, significant others, uh, that just are toxic. Maybe, you know, with the rise of social media and reality TV, I know of people that are addicted to drama. You got a drama addiction? I mean, everything has to be a big deal. You know, something's out of place, or the mail's late, or the cable went out, or this happened, and the grocery store ran out of toilet paper, whatever. It's like a major deal. I guess the toilet paper is sort of a big deal, but you know what I'm saying, right? We all have these little things that we carry around in the patterns we repeat and repeat and repeat. And we can equate that to the story today in scripture. It's like there's a figurative demon that presses us down and wants us not to have the life that God promises us. That wants to lie and steal and destroy Remember, that's what the enemy does, right? The enemy seeks to steal, to lie, steal, and destroy. Well, let me show you how this might play out in your life here. We're going to do a little exercise here. Yoga, no yoga, no spiritual yoga or liturgical dance. <laughs> all right, so this is you in this chair, okay? With, with all the things. And uh, this is your uh, hurt, your pain, your heartache, um, your hardship, whatever it is. Today, I'll, I'll play it out like maybe it's depression or an addiction, right? And so you make a decision. Let's say it's today. Let's say it was last week, last month. Two years ago, you made a decision. And you're going to finally deal with it. So this is you talking to your addiction. Oh, my gosh, I am so tired. There's days I can't even get out of bed because of you. You've robbed every ounce of joy out of my life. Sure, I smile when I'm out and about and around people, but inside I'm broken and crying and I can't stand myself. I can't even hardly look in the mirror anymore. My life is just really wrecked. And it's your fault. And I'm going to deal with it right now and I'm kicking you out. You're no longer going to rent space in my head. You have no place in my life. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of feeling like I need to crawl out of my skin and escape everything and just feeling hopeless and full of despair. So that might be you talking to your hurt, your pain, your issue. 
But this is what that issue, that hurt, that addiction, that pain is going to say back to you. <laughs> oh, man, I've heard it all now. You are going to take control. Good luck with that. I mean, really, I'm all for you. <laughs> but you know that I got it all handled. I've got you figured out. I know which buttons to push, how to send you over the edge, how to raise that anxiety level, how to make your heart rate go from zero to 60, just like that. You know what? You're in prison. You're in my prison. And my one and only goal is to keep you there, to starve out every ounce of life that you have, to make you lower than low. And if I'm lucky, I might even take your life. So good luck with that change. Good luck with healing. Good luck with healing yourself and doing it all on your own. Because it ain't going to happen. You see, there's a lot of power in this chair, isn't there? Those figurative demons want one thing. And it's not to see you prosper. It's to harm you. To destroy you. To take every bit of joy out of your life. To make you miserable. There's a couple other chairs. Now this chair is Jesus. And we're going to call this chair the committee. Almost. See, the committee's out to get you. Now, we all know that if we pair up with Jesus, Jesus has all authority, as the scripture said, power, right? To take care of that healing problem. Now, you're trying to do it by yourself, and Jesus is in this chair just waiting for the invitation by you to walk beside you to take care of that issue once and for all. To bring healing into your life. Now, in this chair is the committee. The committee are all those voices in your head that believe everything that your hurt, your pain, your addiction have told you all along. That you're worthless. That you don't deserve to be loved. That you're in his prison and that he's going to take you down. So that committee just pulls up beside and starts beating the living tar out of you. Beating you down to the point where those patterns keep repeating and the hurt gets worse and worse and worse and worse. You need Jesus to come up beside you with the power and authority to cast out these demons. You see, to, you can go and try to do it on your own. You can try to go and, and seek help. And I'm not saying that that's not an important component. But if you want to deal with it once and for all, you need a relationship with the healer. The liberator, the redeemer, the savior of the world, Jesus Christ in your life. Because he has the power and the authority to get rid of that thing once and for all. To turn your life upside down or maybe we'll say for the sake of argument right side up. So you're not trapped by this addiction, this depression, this hopelessness, this pattern of life that drags you down. And over here, though, as you draw closer to Jesus, those people in that committee seat are going to be whispering in your ear. You can't do it. You know what? Jesus is just lying to you. He doesn't have any power. I've got all the power. Look at your life. How many times have you prayed? How many times have you gone to church? How many times have you read the scriptures? How many times have you failed in it all? And the committee just keeps whispering and whispering. And the enemy is on that committee. The head chief enemy. You know who I'm talking about. And he's in there too. Now, Jesus has all power and authority though. And so for a while, the committee kind of leaves your life. And whatever issue, addiction, wherever that hurt and pain is, 
they disappear for a while. You got that season of peace. It's like the eye of a hurricane, really, though, isn't it, sometimes? I mean, there's a storm on one side, the calm in the middle, and then there's a storm. You see, because that committee and that issue, that addiction is just sitting over here waiting, patiently waiting, waiting for an opportunity. One bad day, one broken relationship, one time you get fired at the job that you loved, one moment when you get down and discouraged, and that addiction, that hopelessness, that hurt, that pain, the past is waiting over there to pounce. Just wait. The committee keeps whispering. It's not as loud as it was when it was sitting close, but it's still whispering. But here's the thing. If Jesus has all power and authority to cast out all those demons, to cure you, to heal you, if Jesus is the remedy that the Bible promises us, then all of a sudden something amazing begins to happen. You grow stronger and stronger the longer and longer that you walk with Jesus Christ. The more you rely and trust in God to bring you the healing that you seek so much, the stronger and stronger you get. The temptations are less and less and less. The issues are less and less and less. And you deal, learn to deal with things in a different way. You learn to deal with things that don't lead to destruction but lead to real life. You believe those words in the Bible that say you're more than a conqueror. You believe those words in the Bible that says by his stripes we are healed. You believe in those words that say and proclaim that Jesus is risen from the dead and is alive today in your life and in this world. You've internalized it. Now, you, Jesus, and a new committee come into play. And now this committee is reminding you of all those promises that God gives you. That you're good enough, that you're worthy, that you're loved. That Jesus went to the cross for you with all your brokenness, with all your sin in your life, with all the times you've fallen short. It doesn't matter because Jesus still loves you. He loves you so much that he took and paid the price for you so that you might have real life. So that you might have hope. That you might be able to rejoice even in the midst of your struggles. Because you know beyond a shadow of a doubt who is on your side. You want to cast out a demon? You want to get rid of the hurt and the pain and the suffering? The heartache? The hardships? The hollowness? Seek Jesus. Come to Him. All of a sudden, there's no power in that issue. There's no power in that addiction. There's no power in that depression. There's no power in that hopelessness and heartache. Because you are with the one that has all power. That can do all things. You are with the one who has conquered sin and death in the world. Risen from the grave. And is alive today. And you've got a whole committee now. That instead of whispering in your ear all the negatives and all the hurt in the past. Is whispering good positive affirmations of encouragement to you. Reminding you of every promise that God has ever made to his people and to you. Healing is possible. Leopards can change their spots. Because all things, all things are possible through Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey friends, I'm certainly glad that you joined us this morning for this special worship service that was all about healing. As I said in the message, you know, we're all in need of healing. There are all those little broken places that really control our lives that we may or may not be aware of. And we struggle through life sometimes just to try to make sense of it all. And we can cope for a while, but eventually those things that eat at us and eat at our hearts and cause us to stumble and fall before the Lord, they, they start to get at us and, and uh, 
diminish our souls. And I know that's not God's plan for our lives. He wants to see us whole. He wants to see us healed. And as Jesus himself promised, he wants us to have an abundant life. So, in the sanctuary right now, we're going through the healing service and anointing folks that want to come forward. But I wanted to wrap it up for you online today with a special prayer for healing, for your healing. On behalf of all your children. As we close out our service today. We reach out to you so and know pray. that you're restoring, redeeming Gracious every and loving place God, of difficulty, every know the plans you have for us, glory. plans to prosper us. Thank you that we're give able us a to come to you. Hope. It breaks your heart when we're hurting, when we're sad, depressed, when we allow other things to take control of our lives and replace you as first in our hearts. We'd ask, Lord, that you touch us in a real and powerful way this morning. That you search our hearts for those places that need healing. That we may be the people that you created us to be, the individuals with a plan and a purpose for our lives. So, Lord, I'd ask for your healing touch on those that are listening right now. Touch their hearts. Touch their minds. Touch their souls. If they're involved in a spiritual battle, Lord, I just pray that you'll stand by them and fight with them. If it's an emotional situation like depression or anxiety, then Lord, help them to trust in you more and more. Help them to see that you have the perfect plan. If it's an, a need that's a physical need, Lord, we know that not only did Jesus heal people physically in the Bible, but he healed them spiritually. So we know he has that power to relieve the illnesses that plague our lives. So I just pray, Lord, that you'll touch those listening. That you'll heal them. That you'll restore them. That they may walk into the life that you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, I'm glad you joined us this morning. Uh, lots of things going on in the life of the church that you can get involved in. We encourage you, if you feel led, uh, to send in an offering for us to help us with our ministries. But more importantly than that, we'd want to get you involved in some of the ministries that we have. We have a Wednesday night Bible study uh, that continues. You can tune in on Facebook Live or come and visit us at the church Wednesday nights at 6.30. And we'd love to see you. And, or have you tune in to, to catch up on things. Uh, we have Scout Sunday next week. Our Boy Scout troop and Cub Scout troops will help us out with worship and we celebrate uh, that uh, program in our community. And then we're getting ready to go into preparing for Easter. And uh, we have a special sermon series called Drawn In. And we'd love for you to join us for that series. But right now, Let's hear this word of blessing as we go forth and enjoy our day. Go forth replenished by the grace and mercy of God. Blessed by the healing love of Jesus. Energized by the limitless power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day.